Living Learning with Cindy, the LD Coach. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, today, I wanted to talk about my why. Why I became a teacher. It's really interesting, I guess. <laughs> I never, ever wanted to be a teacher. Not once. Um, since I can remember, maybe around the age of uh, six or so, I said that I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and that is what I set my sights on um, all through high school, um, even in my freshman year of college. Like that was my plan. I was going to go. Um, I was actually I had um, my major was history, political science. Um, yeah, was it history, political science first? It sure was. So, yeah, my major was history, political science. Um and my plans were to get a degree in that and then um, go on to law school. But something fascinating happened, or maybe it wasn't fascinating, but um, back when I was in school, like the real hip thing to do was to go back to your high school during Christmas time. And so I remember going back to um, the high school that I had graduated from, you know, you had to floss and all of that stuff. But I went to see my track coach who was just a really positive male role model in my life at the time. So um, I went back to say hello to him. And I remember when I went into his room, he was like, oh, hey, Lucinda, how are you doing? What you been up to? And of course, he asked all the, I guess, the typical questions that you would ask. And one of those typical questions was, what is your major? And I proudly said, history, political science. He immediately was like, oh, Lord, girl. He said, everybody I know that um, received a degree in history, political science is somewhere managing a McDonald's. That was like a knife in my heart. And like, he didn't even linger on it. He kind of just said that. And then we went on to, you know, whatever else was going on, what was going on back home at the school and me and with college. But it stayed with me. And not, not really, I wasn't really hurt. It was really more of, you better consider this type of thing. And I had always been the type of person or growing up the type of child that um, I didn't always have to learn by experiencing. And I remember just like thinking to myself, wondering like, you know, well, what would happen if I didn't immediately go to college? Um, you know, what would I do? <laughs> and so for me, what he said was like, really like, I could see how that would happen to people. And so I remember thinking to myself um, that I needed a backup plan. And for me, my backup plan, um, I thought about it. And then I said, well, you know, I'm majoring in history. So I could be a history teacher if there was a delay between, um, you know, me going to law school. And so I immediately, when I got back to um, my campus, after the holiday break, I actually went um, at Starbucks. Give me a second. Hi, um, may I have a hot coffee venti with uh, two creams? And may I have about five raw sugars on the side? I will add those in myself. So, uh, where was I? Um, I guess I still should wait. I'm going to be distracted. So, basically, when I got back to campus, I had my major changed and I actually or I added education um to my major yes <laughs> how are you I'm doing just oh, I guess I could put those in there please wait do not remove remove all right he can keep a receipt um, so yeah, so as soon as I got back to campus, I changed or I added education to my major and my plan or what I figured was that if anything happened and if I had to take a break or anything, then I could always teach history. Now, here's the interesting thing that you guys don't know about me that I really have not shared this um, on my YouTube, my family YouTube either. 
Um, but if for those of you who follow me uh, from Facebook and Instagram before I started doing um, YouTube, you know that um, I'm dyslexic. And so for me, education has always been um, a source of insecurity. Um, although I have done very, very well, I was really fortunate and blessed um, to have the or to have found the right teachers. I did not get a, anything to stare my coffee with. I have to go back around because I definitely need something. Um, yes, I was really, really blessed. And so for me, um, you know, I had those rough years. Like I did not learn to read until I was probably starting in the fifth grade like I was a non-reader in the fourth grade and that was the year that I was diagnosed and I was diagnosed at the end of the year and I didn't start receiving special education services until uh, fifth grade Hello. hi I'm sorry I just came through I forgot to get a straw so um yeah thank you yeah, so for me, education had always been a source of insecurity because I wasn't good at it for so long. Um, one, um, you know, I always had to work harder than other people. Uh, once again, I was blessed that once I really kind of found my footing, I just flew. Um, you know, even now though, I still, I do not like to read um allowed without previewing what I am going to read. Um, I am probably a poor speller. Not probably. I am a poor speller, uh, which is really funny. I'm actually a good writer. <laughs> I express myself better with pen and paper than I do um, orally, uh, but I don't spell well. So you would very rarely see me um, write uh, just a handwritten note or anything. You know, I'm all about my computer. I guess that's my accommodation. So anyway, because of that, um, you know, there was a, always a, a sense of shame. Um, I hated being in the special ed classes, um, especially when I got to middle school. In elementary school, it was cool. It was fun. I loved my teacher. Um, she made us really feel like we were her children. And then she was awesome. Like my memory of fifth grade was simply me being at a reading table, um, reading with Miss Bly. So she has always been just someone who's so special in my life. And I keep in touch with her, her now. And like my ultimate goal is to really be uh, for someone else what she was for me. And I actually think I have already been that, um, which is such a blessing. Okay, can you get out? There you go. Um, don't be mad at me. So anyway, I eventually did learn to read and I eventually became a pretty awesome student. I graduated, what, like 17, 16 out of, I think my class was 300. Um, or whatever that was. Um, well, in graduate school, I had a 4.0 undergrad. I think it was a 3.8 or 3.6. So anyway, I have done really well, right? But education or teaching was not on my radar. You know, no one was ever going to know that I was um, in special ed for one. And it wasn't something that I admitted. I did not self-identify in college. I wanted to prove to the world that I could do it. And I did, but it came at um, at a great heartache, I think, or a lot of stress and struggle that I didn't have to had I self-identified. But, you know, I, I think I had to go through what I went through in order um, to be the person and to do what I'm doing today. So, um, for me, it was just like... Um, it was just, uh, it was actually a spiritual moment that really made me um, change to special education. Um, you know, I still, like, I, once again, I keep saying that I, teaching was not on my radar. I didn't want to do it. When I said, okay, a backup plan, it was because, you know, I always had a good memory. History was 
always interesting to me. I never had a problem memorizing the different periods and all of that good stuff. So I was like, hey, you're already good at that. You know, it's not something that you would do forever, make a career out of. So just suck it up. But something happened second semester when I came back from that Christmas break that totally wrecked my life forever. And it was nothing short of a very spiritual experience for me. Um, I had taken my first education course. And I remember, I think it probably was either the first or second class. And um, it was around that time that Bill Cosby's son um, had gotten shot, Enos Cosby, by the side of the road. And the my teacher, her name was uh, Professor Miles. I, I will never forget her. And she's not remarkable, you know, in my life whatsoever because, um, but I just remember her because of this incident. So anyway, she, I believe the, it was an article uh, in the New York Times about Enos. And if any of you know his story, he struggled, the character, um, the, the, the son character on the Cosby show um, was loosely based off of Enos. And Enos struggled in school as well and always trying hard but couldn't get it and always wondered why until in his latter years he was diagnosed with dyslexia. And so for him, being diagnosed was a sense of empowerment. You know, for me, it was a sense of shame. <laughs> But for him, it was empowerment. It was like, yes, I knew I wasn't stupid. There's a reason why, you know, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. Or it took me longer to do this. And he devoted him, his life to education. And not only education, but educating students in urban cities that were not as fortunate to get the probably the type of help that he received that enabled him to, um, you know, eventually go on to college and so forth. And so his life goal or his life plan was to like open up a school for like inner city kids. And so anyway, I don't know. I'm going because I'm getting kind of misty eyed. But he ended up, um, we ended up, she ended up um, having the article from the New York, New York Times, which told all of this stuff about his life. And I remember her passing it out and I somehow knew, I knew she was going to ask somebody to read it. And for me, OMG, like this is the type of anxiety <laughs> that I felt all throughout college um, because I never like to read like straight off and I'm looking around because I'm sitting here apart I never wanted to read off the cuff um it just horrified me to have to um because I would have and it happened once or twice but I felt horrible get into a word that I did not know and I remember praying I said Jesus please Jesus Jesus please don't let her call on me don't let her call on me and I tried to make myself so small um but he answered my prayer he answered my prayer she did not call on me um she called on another student and they proceeded to read the article I want to try my coffee Mm. Let's see. Yeah, pretty good. So, um, she didn't call on me. That student proceeded to read the article. As she read the article, I was convicted. Meaning, like, I felt such a sense of... Like, I felt so bad that... You know, here is someone who has a story just like mine. And instead of being ashamed, instead of running away from it, he embraced it. Not only did he embrace it, he committed his life to wanting to help other um, other people like him. And not just any people, people who were unfortunate. I'm sure people... Um, that didn't have the same money that he had because I'm sure that with the amount of money his parents had, he got all types of tutors and um, therapists, educational therapists. Um, 
but he realized that you know even out of his pain his struggle that there was something greater and for me i was always so embarrassed i hated special ed i hated being in there and i came up during the time where it was not inclusion you either earn your right to be in mainstream classes or you stayed in the little room <laughs> And I certainly log my time um, in the little room throughout my middle school years. And so um, I still, I have dealt with it, but um, like even my friends in special education, I've always loved them dearly. But even in high school, when I got out, you know what? They better not say nothing to me <laughs> in the hallway around my regular ed friends. Like I avoided them at all cost um, because I just did not want to be associated with special ed um, because I did not understand the label at the time I did not understand that you can have this label and still be super smart and super intelligent so for me it was just whew, it was just awful um so anyway it was like just I'm sure it didn't it took her maybe no longer I guess the 10 minutes five minutes to read that article but I, my whole life kind of, or my whole educational experience kind of flashed before my eyes. And I felt this feeling of, look how much God has blessed you. You know, I didn't have lots of money whatsoever. And here I am uh, being labeled, having been labeled, sitting in a college class, really equipped with the skills necessary to go on, on my own, you know, and I so selfishly only thought about myself. I didn't think about anyone else, um, just Cindy. Um, and so like, I felt such a conviction that like right then and there, I, I, my purpose was, was birth. Like I just knew that the calling on upon my life was to be a special education teacher. And I remember saying um, to God, I will teach them, but no one will ever know that I was in special ed. I said that and I meant that. And I changed my major maybe a couple of days later to psychology with an endorsement in special education. Um, and I went on with my college career in life. Um, and I held fast to that word of <laughs> never sharing my educational journey with anyone until um, a couple of years Ooh, and um, when I was working, um, maybe not that I had worked for about a couple of years or whatever, I think I ended up sharing with one female student and then her face just lit up. Um, it just lit up so much that um, I knew that I had to um, be more vocal about my educational experience. In fact, though, even a glimpse of that um, took place when I was in college. You know, for those of you who don't know, too, I, I wrote a book. And I'm not going to add that whole, how that all came about, but it started in college, too. I actually started the process in college, but told myself that I couldn't do it. Um, maybe I'll do another video. I don't want to get so emotional again. But that's how... That's how I became a teacher, and that is why I stayed. Through the frustration um, of it all, um, I stay, And I know that this is what I've been called to do. And no matter how much my students make me pull my hair out, um, I wake up every morning <laughs> ready to go again because this is what I want to spend my rest my life the rest of my life doing I think I just had an LD moment <laughs> and so I and 
that's kind of where my name, the LD Coach, uh, it, it stands for um, learning difference. Um, but lately, I was just like, well, you know, I don't want my whole identity to be about a learning difference because there's so much more to me than just that, you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm a teacherpreneur. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. Um, you know, I've done some pretty decent things for a little old person that nobody knows. Um, so, um, and I have a lot of wisdom to share. So, I've kind of now made the acronym stand, or the L in the acronym just to stand for Living Learning Coach. Um, so, it kind of encompasses it all. Well, there you have it. That is my why. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think about my story. Matter of fact, um, I want to hear your story. Hopefully, you are one of my peers or soon-to-be peers or even one of my parents that follow me. You know, it's so important to show your kids other people who look like them. And in our case, your your case, um, if your child has a, a learning difference, you need to show them not only the rich and famous people, but you need to show them the everyday people who make this world go around, who defy the odds and who um, does not live in the box that label uh, labels often create for us. So anyway, Please, if you enjoyed my story, please share it. I do. I think more people need need to hear it. More teachers. There are so many more teachers out there like me that who are still living in the closet. <laughs> I always like saying that. I came out the closet. Um, but anyway, they need to find the courage to share their story because it inspires students. Like I think that is probably one of the things that my students appreciate about me the most is the fact that when they look at me they see their future self and I wouldn't want it any other way all right so signing off make sure you subscribe make sure you share and make sure you comment